Tombra. Tombra? Tombra. I'll give it a shot. Go. Use it in a sentence. He had a magnificent tombre to his voice. Tombre? Tombre. Are you adding it's shit? A French, no, it's a French it's word. It's a French word. Nate, say it again. Tombre. Tombre. Tambre. Sometimes it'll tombre. be like in English. Yeah. T O M B R A. Tombra. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. It's T I M B R E. Not bad for an idiot. T. <laughs> There's a story inside every smoke shop with every cigar and with every person. Come be a part of the cigar lifestyle at Bovina. This is Box Press. Welcome to another episode of Box Press. I'm your host, Rob Gagne. And I'm your other host, Nate Beck. And today we have a special guest. His name is Nick Heyman, and sometimes we call him Nigel Hamon. Or wait, what's his last name? Nigel? Hamam. Hamam. Hamam bouquet. bouquet. Hamon is a thing you eat. <laughs> Spanish ham. Hamon. Spanish ham. You can call me Hamon. Hamon? Yeah. Hamon, that Ni- would be incorrect, yeah. A little Nigel. I met a guy named Nigel Hammond. I know that guy. Hamon. Nick, he's Hammond. crazy, that guy. <laughs> he is crazy. <laughs> you unleash Nigel, and it's going to be an interesting night. At your peril. And we got to experience that in full force. <laughs> One bottle of Lafroy 10 later, and it was on. Nigel was rampaging. Nigel showed up, and the night got weird. <laughs> the fire was just ripping. Ripping. We were, ta- we were solving all the world's problems. What did we start with? Seven bundles of wood? Yeah, we went through all, all of them. All of them. And it's all hard, of them. it was hardwood. Hardwood. Wow. So that sucker, yeah. I could see the blue flames and mm-hmm. like the heat. Yeah. It was beautiful. We were so warm. And that was the coldest night that we were there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that was perfect timing on that wood. About perfect timing. 10 degrees Fahrenheit. I think overnight it got down to, what did we calculate? Minus Negative... 13 degrees I, Celsius? I believe so. Yeah. Minus 13 degrees Celsius. That was pretty fresh. So for those of you across the pond, chilly. Was yeah. A l- little nippy, I think. A little bit so, nippy. Nick. Yeah. Have you ever been winter camping? No. Yeah, no. No. I um, have been camping, usually under duress. Really? Uh, yeah. Duress? It's not my, uh, not my thing, you know, really to slum it. You, we say? Did we, were we slumming it? No, camping is slumming it. No. Just yeah. the act of camping would be slumming no. it. No. Yeah. Right? No. Yeah. Disagree yeah. 100%. Yeah, me too. Disagree yeah. 100%. Well, y- y- I'm the fucking guest, right? Yeah, you're, this, you're the Brit <laughs> across the pond. So shut the fuck up. With <laughs> <laughs> no, I would always say, you know, yeah, camping's great. I love it. I like, love the nature and the outdoors, but hell, a good hotel is also good, right? Well, yeah. 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 So, yeah, I've been camping, but never winter camping. Not and that e- extreme. On top of that, we didn't even have a tent. We had hammocks. Yeah. Yes. So, so it's like hanging in the tree. Exactly. How did you sleep the first night? Uh, on and off, I think you would yeah. describe it as. Yeah. So yeah. I had a little doze. And then, you know, when you're away somewhere new or there's a lot in your mind, your mind works overtime. There's all that crazy shit staring about trying to find a place for itself. Mm-hmm. And now I'd like wake up and go, that was a car door just slammed. <laughs> no, it wasn't. You're up a mountain in the middle of nowhere. Uh-huh. But in my brain, there was this car somewhere. And then you have to think, why is there a car? No, there isn't a car. I go back to sleep. And then right. something else. Up. But we, I slept well when I was, you know, asleep. slumbering. Yeah. yeah. We did both hear at about pattern? four in the morning. Uh, a small critter mm. goes uh, skittering about, like, because you can hear everything in the snow, and it's That's it's not quiet, quiet, but it's fairly quiet. Yeah. And we're pretty sure it was just a little rabbit because we saw some tunnels next to the trees. Yeah. And that's really the only footprints. But you also felt like in your dream, that's it. It went right across your face. Yeah. So every having not done it before, so every everything you're thinking, what is that noise? What is that sound? Uh huh. Some bit of snow falls off the tree, and it's like, what the. Uh huh. And then there's something walking around me, and the, you know you're just thinking everything's on alert. And then yeah, I'm lying there. And I had... <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> what the fuck was that? It's possible. And then I had it running away. Uh huh. That just crawled all over my face. It's it's definitely possible. No, you you dreamt it. Well, I'm not sure you did. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it was a bit like that. Yeah. 
And then just as you're nice and warm, just as you're dozing off, I need to pee. Gotta go pee. There oh, it is. Man. Dang it. Nature calls. The beauty of camping. Then you gotta slide out of a oh. generally very warm mm. setup cocoon. for a hammock. It's, it's like a cocoon. It's like a cocoon. And then you, you put the... your boots on, slip across the other side of the campsite. Yeah. Freezing. And for those that have never hammock camped, because people I think have a general idea of what it is to camp in a tent. Mm. You put some type of cushion or sleeping pad down, you have your sleeping bag, you have your tent, and you have your you know, your rain fly over the top of your tent. That's pretty typical. But with a hammock, oh. in the winter you really you have to have you have a tarp, kind of like a you know, like you would set up if you were really primitive camping. You have a tarp over the top, keeps any snow or rain off. You have your hammock and then on the outside of the hammock, instead of having uh, a dense sleeping bag inside it that you crawl into, you have to have the sleeping bag outside the hammock, and they call it an underquilt. So imagine, if you will, they create sleeping bags kind of like sort like of... a sandwich type. Exactly. Yeah. And it goes around the outside of the hammock and insulates without getting smushed. And then in the inside, you just take your sleeping bag, open it all the way up, stuff your feet in, and pull it over you like a blanket, and you are cocooned in... You know, whatever temperature you're going to be sleeping in. And it's quite cozy. It was cold. Water Rob and froze. I did go winter camping, uh, what, a year and a half ago now? Yeah. And it got down to minus 15 Fahrenheit overnight. What? And Rob poked his head out in the morning and he's like, hey, buddy, you awake? Yep. Kind of sweaty. How about you? Yep. yep. Minus 15 Fahrenheit? Uh, minus 15 Fahrenheit. That's like 40 degrees below uh -huh. Celsius or something? Uh -huh. More than that. Seriously. Yeah. Just yeah. add 32 to that. <laughs> Divide so, you know, shit, 47, cool. uh -huh. negative 47. Uh -huh. Really? In your language. Yeah. Yeah, it was chilly. It was That's awesome. Chilly. We were like birds awesome. dropping dead out of the frozen sky. Yeah. No, they were still gliding. Mm -hmm. And sticking they were, in trees. Yeah, they were <laughs> frozen, mm -hmm. but they were still catching air. <laughs> So, you, well, know, you know, people forget birds are land. light. I mean, their bones are basically air anyway, yeah, so they hollow. just float. Yeah, they yeah. floated. Yeah. Wow, that is cold. Oh, this camping trip got interesting, yeah. folks. <laughs> You'll have to read all about it in the book. We're going to leave some of the details oh, yeah. hidden. Yes. But there is some interesting... You, well, let's just, let's just say it. You yeah. ended up at the hospital. There was a brief visit to the accident and emergency unit. Yes. And... Then you'll just have to read the book. Yes. But I'm alive. Uh huh. And, and the book is the called for wear. what? Because I have the first edition around the world in 80 cigars. What's the, the second edition called? Well, the first one is around the world in 80 cigars, the travels of an epicure. Do you know what an epicure is? A uh, cigar. Really good one. It is a cigar. Mm -hmm. The epicure number two. But it, it actually means someone who has a love for food and drink and the finer things in life, basically. That's an epicure. Yeah. So I thought that was quite fitting. I feel like we did add much of the finer things in life to yeah. our winter camping exactly. trip. So then what version yeah. is this? So that is the first book. And the second book, which is in production, is I thought to myself, if you change the name, nobody's going to know. Mm -hmm. You start all over again. Oh, frankly. you just read the white part, the travels of an epicure. Yeah, because in books, what you do is you don't just like skip bits, you read them. <laughs> And then you get the whole picture. Oh! Uh, <laughs> dang! <laughs> Left wow. to right, top to bottom. <laughs> he's just looking for them. he's just looking for pictures in there, and they're ain't. Yeah, it? that's what I was like. I was like, hey. oh, he he runs into a hippo here. Ooh. That's what he's doing. He's got his mouth open. Oh. Yeah, uh -huh. Was it scary? He's got it, buddy. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to read yeah. more of the words that are next. You can make to it up. Hey, this is uh, New Mexico, little Pablo no, Indian, Pue Pueblo Indians. That's where they um, filmed uh, Tatooine for Star Wars. Oh, oh seriously? Yeah. It's in Tunisia, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nick, how long has this book been uh, in uh, print? This was published in 2019. Okay. So just before all the world changed significantly. Mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah. Is it any coincidence that the color scheme of that book... Yep. It's the same color scheme as your, what you call it, an attaché, your passport case? Yeah, it's a happy coincidence, really. But I think it's my default color. I love orange, yeah. So, I Well, made, uh, I was thinking of the teal, like the Boveda Blue. It is Boveda Blue. Boveda Blue. That's like 90% of it. You know, um, and you gravitate towards the orange, which I think is absolutely spectacular because you love orange. Yeah. I do love orange. So do I, yeah. Uh -huh. But you know Brocletti? Yeah. 
Same oh. color. What's Brickletti? Whiskey. It's a whiskey mm. from. Um, it's a whiskey from Isla. Yeah. And I was up there. Sure. Uh, you mean Isla? Exactly. Isla. Yeah, Isla. 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 Isla Nuba. Isla yeah. Nuba. Isla. 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 Yeah. Isla. And uh, once you're up there, it is. If you get a good day, you get that color between sort of sea and and water. And, Spectacular. And I just thought, yeah, that's cool. And the thinking was. I, I oh, yeah, because the Brookladdy, what's the, the um, Port Charlotte or whatever, yeah. their bottle is that color. Yeah, exactly. I know what you mean. And my thinking was, if you're going to do a cigar book, you know, because I used to say to people, look, I'm gonna, I've decided I'm going to do this cigar book. And a lot of respected people in the industry, you know, whose names I won't mention, but would say, they'd laugh and go, another cigar book? Do we really need that? So the thinking was, if you're going to do do something around cigars, it's got to be super different to sure. what's already out there. Yeah. Otherwise, you a just, brown book. Yeah. A with a cigar on it. With some bands and loads Boom. of history about you know Pass. the Menendez brothers Pass. in Havana, uh-huh. and that really leaves me cold because yes, exactly. So many good people have yep. done that to mm-hmm. death, you know. And that and it's not Pass because the other books are bad. It's just like oh, I've already read that. Yeah. Or I've already you know. Uh, and uh, also, like we were saying, that style of detail actually, to me, is really un- un- uninspiring. Mm. I don't really care when they formed it and in which building. Oh and, yeah, and, no. And how? Do you know? You want to see I, the box I factory? Exactly. Yeah. You don't? Well, Why not? That's Come on. that. Yeah. It's my box factory. Look, it's cool. Yeah, but it's a box factory. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It, it is a box boxes. factory. Yeah. What I want to know about is what about that blend and who made it and who makes it now and what are their lives like. And what are the moments when they smoked it that were special to them? Like, what foods, what drinks did they have? Yeah. What great stories did they tell? I also that's like way more interesting to the me. blending process, too, because, like, think that's of... Art. Well, that's the that's Think the of, like, how many times you yeah. had to, like, tweak it. And, yeah. like, yeah. what tweaked it. And then the, you'll, you'll ask somebody that, and they'll be like, yeah, and then so-and-so threw down this, which I've never had before, and we put that in it, and it was like, boom, that was it. And you're like, oh, my God, yeah. that sounds amazing. And why, and how did you know that was going to be good, and where did that leaf come from? And then you go there, and you meet the guys that grow that leaf. That, to me, is inspiring. Oh, absolutely. That, that is, a, you know, the story of cigars, because at the end of the day, it's just some dried leaves. It is. You can wrap a fancy band on it and say it's a $200 Fancy leaf, bunch of fancy dried leaf. leaf. But it's uh-huh. a bunch of dried leaves. So mm-hmm. what actually you are selling is the experience. Mm-hmm. You're selling that collection of skills that has been passed down for generations, and you're selling a, p- a parcel of land because you know this leaf grown in this field will not be the same as the leaf grown 20 meters up. Right. So Correct. That's what is interesting to yeah. me. Yeah. My best writing is, you know, people say, do you know what, when, you, when I read that, I was there with you. I could mm. see through your mm-hmm. eyes and I could hear your voice telling me. You're extremely descriptive in a very good way. So that's my shtick and that's what I think what, what I can do is like, make people think they're there with me, you know? Mm-hmm. Listen to the beginning of this. Is that mustache? Yeah. Okay. Do you want me to read it? Yeah, you do. That would be cool. So this is the first chapter of Around the World in 80 Cigars, Travels of an Epicure. And it's called Mustache. No lily-handed baronet he, a great broad-shouldered Englishman, a lord of fat prize oxen and of sheep, a raiser of huge melons and of pine. That's Lord Alfred Tennyson, just a quote. And then we go into the story. The hairy guy leering in my direction wears a fez and a moustache in which well-to-do blackbirds could happily retire. He's pointing first at me and then at the television dangling precariously in the corner of the room, and I can't make up my mind whether it's because he's friendly or because he's considering doing... No, sorry, because he's considering dragging me out back to do unspeakable things to me. That is amazing. (laughs) Just that alone is super descriptive. I love this story because it's all true. You know, there's no... This isn't... I haven't made anything up. It might be a little bit of, you know, magic dust here and there. But this is all stuff that happened. And this this little cafe I found, this is in Tunisia, in the corner of of the market, the souk. And I was just going, wandering around, thinking, this is cool, that's cool. Maybe I can go find somewhere to have a smoke. And then I found this little, weird little French guy in this cafe, and, and this, like, it's real Indiana Jones type. Mm. Cafe grimy, but hot, kind of cool, really hot, sandy. You go I in, mean, take your hat off, and then like, all this dust Like comes you might off. suddenly get herded into the back of a 
a, a cargo van and away you go. There you go. And I, but this, this, this line sums it up to me. You know, in the, he's interested in live Arabic footage being screened in grainy images in the corner of this little Tunisian cafe where dust motes dance through shafts of sunlight and the air is thick with a heavy scent of last night's shisha pie. Then you're there. Mm -hmm. oh. You can see it, you can smell it. That's Whoa. what I think my shtick is, you know? I got to get the audio book. Because <laughs> you read it, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I got to get that. And what is funny about that, what I, gotta get that. I, what I didn't realize was, so you, I took like two days to record this thing because you kept screwing it up. Right. And after a while, you're just sick to death of it. Mm -hmm. You know, I've written the book. I've read the book about 50 times. Now I've got to sit and read it again and then again and again and again. So yeah. as much as I love it, you're just like, oh, God, this is bad. Uh-huh. And apparently in the, the audio book, they failed to remove one of the... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, for fuck's sake! No way! No, it's in there. I love it! Now we're for sure going to get the audiobook. Oh, yes! And what'll be great is, like, reading the book, you would remember the great experience we had. Yes. The, the friendship that we now uh, have created. But listening to your voice, you go, oh, yeah, that's my friend Nigel. <laughs> and I was yeah, I got, two, that's I got two new friends out Two friends uh -huh. for the price Nick of and Nigel. And Nigel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. So each chapter is a standalone story about <coughs> some crazy circumstance over the past 25 years that, that I was involved in and as a I started life in newspapers so I grew up as a cub reporter on the local paper and I went to learn shorthand and law and public affairs and stuff like that you know like proper old-fashioned journalism sure school and I did lots of court reporting and I'd covered sport and I covered business and I covered everything politics so you get this wonderful grounding of I don't know a lot about one thing, mm. but I know a little bit about a lot of stuff. Sure. Yeah. Which is a bit like Nateopedia. Oh, Nateopedia. Somebody Love mentions that guy. something and it goes, oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> I have a little bit of that. It's like I said, a vault. His brain can just remember that The Cliff stuff. Clavin of useless knowledge. <laughs> I love and it. And sometimes not so useless. Yeah, I know. I absolutely uh -huh. love it. And no. actually people go, that's so cool. He it's knows so much about and it. So much. admirable. Yeah. And it gives me immense joy yeah. to learn... All sorts of little things about stuff that I find interesting. Well, I could tell right. that, and also more than that. That is your whole stick. That's your whole reason for being. And yeah. he's not pompous about it. You're no, not I like arrogant not, about it. You're not gets like excited when you yeah, learn and, something about. And it's not like, yeah. oh, you got that wrong. I'm gonna correct you. No, no, you're very humble about it, and I just I love asking you questions. <laughs> or it gives me great joy yeah. figuring out how to do something. I'm like uh -huh. Nick, how do you do this? Yeah. Or Nate, sorry. I'm looking at both of you. It's all n n Nate, n n yeah. You don't know how many times this week I had to like bite my tongue and be like, n -n 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 Nick. You. Nick. <laughs> hey there, you. Which N? <laughs> Which actually uh -huh. you responded, Nate, a couple of times to when I was like, hey, Nick, you want a water? And Nate would go, no. <laughs> I was like, ah. He's an honor. It goes both ways, buddy. It goes both ways. <laughs> sure, sure. He just heard that, uh -huh. like an N name, and he's like, no, nope. no, nah, nah, I'm good. No, I'm good. But that inquisitiveness, I think, is how I would describe it, is very much my way of finding sense of this world that we live in. That's, okay, so some, that's like that, but why is it like that? Uh -huh. Who started that? And then I like to go and meet people in specific places. Yeah, for sure. And then next thing you know, you have this sort of little map around the world of really yeah. esoteric stuff going on, but it's fascinating as to why the world works in the way that it does. Absolutely. And that net mm -hmm. sort of spider's web thing is what really yep. floats my boat. Well, when, you, when we first met over Zoom on this project, mm. Benny had roped us in, got Sean and Tim and myself and you all on a Zoom. Yeah. And, and I thank thought, you, Benny. I thought, why in the heck do we have to fly this guy out here yeah. to write who a is chapter this, who is this in kid? his book? Yeah. And you explained, well, I have to experience something, you know. And I was like, what is there to experience about making saltwater packs? You know, and you were like, no, 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 no. Yeah. We can go deeper. And then Benny was like, oh, Rob and Nate do winter camping. And then I was like. Oh, is he the one that brought it up? Yeah. And then I was oh, like. Oh, way no, to go, Benny. Is, and then you lit up and you were like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that, exactly what I'm. That's what I'm talking. And yeah. then uh -huh. as soon as I saw that, I was like. The lights came on. The lights came on. Yeah. And then I got your book and started reading it, and I go, oh. 
Yeah. <laughs> he's not just going to like, you know, book report this shit. Yeah. He's actually going to experience. Yeah. He's there. He's telling you about it. He's descriptive about it. You could almost subtitle the name of that book as Around the World in 80 Stories. Mm. Yeah. Exactly. The cigar is just part of the story. Yeah, exactly. Because all of us that enjoy Only cigars, it's part of your life. our favorite part, if we were, I think, all to agree is we smoke cigars because it helps us create really unique and interesting and curious stories because you spend time with another human being yeah. or even by yourself and you're now part of a moment that who knows what could happen. I think that's the key to me is you have to, you have to stop and or pay attention yes. in a different way. So you have to be present. Absolutely. And that was the whole premise of, it's really hard to describe, but as you said, there's loads of people that suddenly go, now I understand what he's talking about. Yeah. Now, and especially now that the first book is out, because you imagine right. trying to pitch that no. to somebody who everyone just went, mm, <laughs> thanks dude. No, no, this doesn't make any sense to us. But it, so each cigar and each memory is like a little pin on a map for me. And, and if you say to me, do you remember when you were at so-and-so, and I kind of go, mm -hmm, and then you, go, you smoked an Epicure number two, and I, bang, I was in that cafe, right? And that's when that guy with the fez, uh -huh. that's what cigars do for me. For sure. Punctuate oh. memories in my life. Mm -hmm. But I think that most people, like, cigars are, are just not something you do and forget about. You, you have that moment with yourself, with those thoughts, with whatever your state of being is in life at that time. You know, yeah, if, we if talked it, a lot when about I've that. been very happy, I've smoked cigars. When I've been very yes. sad, I smoke cigars. When I well, experience loss, let's open that. And, yeah, let's sure. open that. I okay. mean, because we were not well before Nigel got there. We were <laughs> in some great discussion of life, mm. the pursuit of you know happiness, yeah. and then the struggle of mental health, yep. the struggle of changes in our life you know i got two kids now nate you have five kids that are almost out of the house now yep pretty close so you're at a different stage but uh -huh. you went through all that stuff yep you are going through new changes new relationship and that and then nick you go well if i'm being fully honest uh 28 or 2008 uh i was severely depressed and declared bankruptcy yeah yeah and, and that's so bring us back like why well, th yeah, I've never publicly talked about that because it's not very English for a start to talk about that stuff. But also, I'm a private person and I don't particularly want to wash my dirty linen in public. Having said all of those things, I think it's very important that you recognize where you come from, where you've been, the things you've done. That must, that's what makes you human. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we were talking particularly about being a, a guy that, you know, our parents, my father, his father... You know, if you'd said I'm depressed, I, I, you know, I don't want to get out of bed today, they'd kick, tip you around the ear and say, pull yourself together, boy, and go and... Right. You know, and that's maybe not the best response to a mental illness. You know, an illness is an illness. Uh-huh. You don't start shouting at the guy because he's ill. Right? Yeah. You know, it's yeah. I just broke my leg. Oh, you're an idiot. I, I, I do well, think that's we one of the kind really... of shouting at you when we had to take you right before <laughs> well, the Well, I hospital. was an idiot. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's right. Right. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I am no, an idiot. One hey. of the things I'm very, very happy about in our current like cultural climate is we are now becoming far more comfortable and more vulnerable with yes. any type of mental illness, Definitely, any type of right. depression, anxiety, right. things that when, when we were kids, when our parents were kids, um, like sweep it under the rug, knock yourself out of don't it. Like, it. come yeah, on, snap no, out of you're it. Right. And, and I've or, seen, yeah, yeah. Pull yourself out of it. Yeah. yeah. Pull come yourself on, man. I feel yeah. like this would be one you'd say, pull yourself together, man. Pull yourself man. together. Pull your socks up. That's uh -huh. what we, that people would yep. say. And that, I agree with you, and especially having kids, having seen how the world's changed in terms of those things, in terms of diversity, in terms of sexism and racism, and, you know, the little things that I would have thought nothing of saying when I was a kid, you know, and my kids yeah. go now, go, you can't say that. Yeah. Because you go, yeah, you're absolutely right. You're right. Yep. So, yeah, back to 2008, and I lost my shirt, you know, everything. I had a business that was a you know good business, and then credit crunch came and all of that stuff. And for reasons that I won't bore you with, overnight I lost a lot. So I was then maybe thirty odd, with two young children and a life I thought I was going to have, right, which is now no longer there, totally gone. And worse than that, the life I thought I was going to have in five or ten years was retire and enjoy the rest of my days as a rich guy. 
And now, not only do I not have that life, I actually don't have the life that I had to start with. You're back. I don't have... You actually had to give the bank money. I don't have the house. Yeah, I don't have, right. I actually don't own anything. And there were times when, you know, people knocking on the door or guy coming to me saying, I noticed in your bank statements that you visited a gun shop. Do you have a gun? Yeah, I have a shotgun. Oh, I'll take that. So that's a violation of your house, your home, your dignity, your everything. So if you go through that, you know, you either deal with it in two ways. You either go, fuck you, man, I'm going to really stick it to you guys. And it builds this hard carapace around you. And maybe you, that helps you or yeah. maybe it doesn't. Or you just get kicked into the gutter. And that's, the latter was pretty much what happened to sure. me. You know, there's only so many times someone can punch you in the face before you just think, oh, shit, I give up, you know? Yeah. And uh, that's what happened to me. So that was a very dark place. And I was at that, I don't want to get out of bed in the morning. There's nothing in my life that is good. I can't remember the last time I was happy. Well, let's go, let's go with Foy Vance. Huh. Yeah. So, so we didn't know this. We're driving, that's so all weird. three of us. We're driving back. We all, we all love them. We're driving back from up north. Mm. I said, Nate, put on some music. He goes, all right. 30 seconds later, he's like, here you go. I got a Foy Vance radio and radio station playing on Spotify. And my ears go. You just perked up. I said, did you just say? Say what? Love Foy Vance. This is great. Driving music. And then you go, I've seen him everywhere. Yeah. Like all over. I said, he's in the book. He's in the book. My kids love Foy Vance. This is crazy. Uh... And the story is it the one where you're in Africa and you're listening yeah, in the hot tub? That's it. Yes. Yeah. That's what I thought. I read that word. Well done. I read for you. And you remembered it. And I said, <laughs> I know that guy. <laughs> so that's crazy. You know, I'm from the other side of the you know the pond, and with these two guys in Minnesota, and then they go for events. Now that to me is not you know there's a circuitous sort of yeah. fate thing going on there. So we put his tracks on, and we're driving home through the night, the snow last night after this epic camping experience with four events blasting out and he has been the story the, the, the soundtrack to my movie life that's what you said you're like now this brings me back to 2009 yep and you go what, explain it you're at the show and so you're going we, through all these so emotions. we start putting uh, the, the music on and I said look I was at this live show we, and I had this album on my phone I was there that night yeah we play a couple of his tracks and I said oh actually it reminds me I once I saw him so and so and I went Said, hey, how you doing, Foy? And shook hands. And then I thought, well, I took my dad to see him once, not long before he died. And then I thought, yeah, yeah. And that, that takes me back to a time when all this shit was going on. And I just thought I was going to get out, you know, see the light of coming out of it, being able to see a life again. And then my dad caught, got cancer and died in, within five months. Oh. And this was at the same time that all this shit was going on. And I just felt like, you know, um, how would you describe it? I actually, I said to my wife, I feel like somebody is up there is, is torturing me. It was like, this guy, okay, let's just tweak this in his life. That's going to screw that. And then just when he thinks it's good, let's do this. That's how it felt to me. A, a bit like Job. Yeah, he was being tested. Right? Uh-huh. And, uh, and so that, and then I said, and then the music played, and then I thought, you know what? I've just remembered something that I had forgotten and filed away. Wow. But on the... I think it was the 15th of February, 2009. I had to go to court and declare myself bankrupt and give everything I had over. And that night I went to Birmingham and saw Foy Vance in concert. And it was a super intense emotional experience. I and bet. He, and he played a lot. He seemed, tended, he seemed to play more of the introspective songs. Oh. And I just remember being, you know, in this maelstrom and listening to this music with tears streaming down my face because of the place I was in. Sure. Yeah. And so I'd forgotten that. See, now the interesting part of that is immediately I thought that's where God meets you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So before you were like, oh, it feels like the guy upstairs is punishing me and like, you know. Mm. And then you go to the Foy Vance concert and – Somehow the music yeah. is speaking to you. Person. Yes. Yeah, it was very much of me mm-hmm. and Foy in the that, room that night. Yeah. That is unbelievable. I, I just find it so... It, it, over and over again, I'm fascinated by how powerful art and creativity is yes. in those moments. 
And I don't know what uh, Ethan Hawke, the actor, uh, I've, I've seen it pop up recurringly on TikTok and on Instagram videos, and they're all kind of connected, but how, you know, when things are going well, you think poetry, ah, it's just not for me. Yeah. But when you're desperate oh, yeah. that's or when so you're true. depressed your, or your ears just don't you're open. heartbroken, it's life. Like well, it's, it's a, food. It's a, it's a passing log to cling to in, the, yes. in that moment of yes. I'm going to drown. Someone else's shared experience to know I'm not the first person to go through this. Someone else has been here before and has come through on the other side. Those are things that really yeah. tie you to other people, whether they're you know, still living or their past, it's a connection you have. And I, I just think that's really and cool. And I think that, that's a good point. And I remember being in a place where, as I said, you know, I could see or find nothing good anywhere. Just being so sad that if I went to buy petrol and the person behind the counter smiled and was nice to me, that, you know, almost changed my day. Really? Yeah. Because... Somebody actually did look at me and smile at me personally instead of, I didn't feel like a person anymore. I felt like a thing, you know? Nate, you're absolutely wonderful at this, but you engage, and you as well, you engage with the, the service, mm. the server. You look them in the eye, you treat them with dignity and respect, and like they're a person, yeah. not yeah. not a, you know, I'm looking at my, me yeah, I'll take the uh, filet mignon. Yeah. And uh, how many people that you have dinner with when you watch this and you notice mm -hmm, this when mm -hmm. you... Mm -hmm. Are a bit more aware. People just go, "Yeah, I'll take that," and they bring a drink, and they sit, and they very often don't even say thank you, which I just think I is hate incredible. It. I hate that. Yeah, but it's just like a, you know, it might as well be a robot serving you, right? Is that what you want? Yeah. Do you want to be served by a robot, or do no. you want to be served by a human being? Another human being who cares yeah. about what they're uh -huh. doing and it, and making sure you're happy yeah. and yeah. And we would spark up conversations with them. Sure. And I, I, there's just so much to that. Your yeah. your uh, your story about the power of some uh, another human being noticing you yes. and just offering a kind word uh, in, in a previous career before uh, for this one. And I still do it now. I decided to make it a point to learn how to remember names. Yeah. Because when somebody uses your name, it's a very powerful thing. It, it and it can be it just in you. passing. Yeah. It, it, it makes you realize, oh, somebody else has noticed I'm actually a distinct human being in this space. And I just really wish, and I'm, I'm never going to be the person that, you know, hammers on someone. You just got to really work on remembering names. And I'm convinced people can remember faces and be like, uh, just born being able to do that. You know, they remember pictures right. yeah. more vividly. They remember faces. They remember characteristics. But I truly believe that those that remember names do so with a uh, uh, a large amount of work. It's a, it's a big effort. But I so wish more people did it because if they were able to see yeah. that type of response Suddenly, from another human being, seen me, you see me. you've seen me and you remembered that I'm not just, hey, buddy. Yeah. Right. You remembered, you know, hey, Amelia or hey, Joseph. You remember their name and their eyes perk up and they look at you and they Suddenly may not smile, but yeah, yeah. they're noticed. They're not just some blob such on a good, the Such a good point, man. I mean, yeah. I remember thinking at the time, you know, when this stuff was going, I felt like I was in like the central reservation of a motorway and everybody is zooming past on either mm -hmm. side and nobody sees me. Yep. Right. That's a very lonely thing to feel. It's very lonely. Horrible. Yep. Nobody sees yep. me. When I mean, you really think about that. Yep. And then I was in, in, uh, including in that my family, you know, I don't think anybody sees me anymore. Yeah. Mm. It's, that's a shit place to be. It's. I think it's actually like... Even worse than being uh, yeah. abused yeah. is the like the abuse of being invisible, that mm. utterly alone. So now yeah. that you know that, that would make a lot more sense. That so what I decided, I actively decided. Okay, how am I going to get through this? What are the good stuff? What's the good things that I can offer, and what and what do I like? And that you know, we had a, this discussion about our children. You know, what do you do when you have kids? It makes you think. How can I make the world a better place? Be, be a good dad. What can I do for the best that I know I can stick to? And, and, I, and at that time, there wasn't much I thought I could do. But I thought, you know, what I can do is just be the best role model I can think to be to my children. You know, that's the biggest thing that I can at least do for them. If I say I'm going to do something, I will do it. I will offer them that 
foundation when they come home they are safe and they are loved and they have decent things that they need but not extravagant things but they will have that base that when they go out into the world that they feel they have something behind them yeah mm. and that was i think to me you know they say what do you want to be if you be the change you you want to see in the world but well if you can show the kids that you have to be kind you have to be courteous you have to show you know respect and you have to show a bit of class in the way you behave and if you do those things you will have a good life because yeah. you will attract good decent people and you will get back what you put out though. there's a another writer that i'm a, a huge fan of uh and everywhere he goes he's an attorney by profession but is a spectacular writer and speaker and everywhere he goes he brings balloons really and people say, why in the world do you bring balloons? And he idea. goes, what, what happens to your face yeah. when somebody gives you a balloon? You're like, oh, I you love are literally balloons. six years old again. Yeah. And when you walk in with a big old pile of, and he just doesn't go in with one balloon. He goes in with like the whole bundle. Fantastic. In fact, one of the kids in his neighborhood, he started a parade in his neighborhood. Now that has grown to be wow. thousands of people in this neighborhood. Really? And he actually tied balloons to a lawn chair so that this kid could float. Now they held him and he didn't go up very high, but he wanted to see if he could float in a in a chair oh, such with a balloons. Kid, kid so thing he, to think, right? Yeah. And this guy is Love in it. his. I think he's. Oh, I'm going to guess he's maybe early 60s, late 50s. Right. Um. What an amazing thing to do. What's his, name? Uh, his name is Bob Goff. He wrote. Uh, he has a couple books out. He wrote uh, a book called Love Does. Basically, that love is something you have to go out and do. You can't yeah. just talk about no, it. Exactly. I can't read a book about Rob and know Rob. I have to spend time with Rob. And those kind of things to me, I think, are just magical. Yeah, You're like, why do you do that? I don't know because it makes one. It makes you feel great. Yeah. And when you see the look on somebody's face, like if you were to walk into a complete stranger and go, "Hey, I got these balloon. balloons," one, they're gonna think. This guy's kind of weird, but like this it. is really kind of cool. Yeah, I like it. I really like this. I'm not going to say no. Uh huh. This, this is, is weird. So he true, makes people, I like and it. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, that is great. And we talked about that too. Like, it may be weird. It may seem odd. It puts you out of your comfort zone. But if you say yes, yes, or you know, Nate, you always said, I, I even said to you, hey, let's go winter camping. You keep talking about this winter camping. Let's do it. And you go, when? I have my calendar out. Pull your calendar out. Uh -huh. Let's do. Let's. Let's at least get it on the calendar. Let's not talk. Let's, let's do. Not, yeah, mm -hmm. let's not talk about it. Let's do. I wish I would have done this. And I shared with you this morning that yep. I used to rock climb. And you go, you should rock climb, you know, at least once or twice a year. Don't let that go away just because you're a new father. Because 10 years could go by and you go, oh, I used to rock climb. I'm not a rock climber yeah. anymore. Yeah. yeah. And that's part of you. Right. And it's very yep. easy to little bits of you get chipped off by life and things going on. Because we give a lot to our children. Yeah, and you have yeah. to, and you should. Or life in general. Yeah. But you yeah. also have to give a lot to you. That's mm -hmm. one thing yep. I've learned. That you have to celebrate what makes you you. And so don't just you know let things get chipped off that you love doing, because you'll end up with this I, sort of square-shaped dad bloke that doesn't really, he's not you anymore. I right. woke up this morning to a text from my daughter who goes to school in Los Angeles. So she texted about 10.45 her time. I was sound asleep. My daughter and I are big fans of Gary Barlow. Uh -huh. So for those of you who don't know, was, you know, kind of seminal 90s mm. boy band, essentially, was in what, Take That? Yeah. Yeah. And there is a, a, a concert montage or a, a, about a 12-minute segment of him at one of his concerts just doing a bunch of his songs all blended together, all just him and the piano. Right. And I listen to it at least once a month. Really? So my daughter texted and said, just watching Gary Barlow made me think of you. Uh, and I'm instantly like, "Yeah, well, that's a great way to start the day. Oh so do you God. know what I pulled up on my phone and yeah. listened to in my car on the way here? Gary Barlow. Of course. It makes me happy every time yeah. I hear it. That's a great a yeah. thing, a little tiny thing. And the same daughter was walking, uh, I think, to class, and she suddenly caught a whiff of cigar. And, oh, her, be and her best friend, before my daughter can say anything, goes, ugh, that smells disgusting. My daughter says, hey, knock it off. <laughs> that reminds me of my dad. That smells, that smells like, like my, my dad. dad. So zip it. And that's I was like, amazing. that's my girl. I love that. Yeah, and loads of people say, do you know what? It reminds me of my granddad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, I think, is a wonderful mm -hmm. thing. So that, going back to explaining how the book came about. So 
with all those things in mind, I thought, what can I do? I know I can do well, and also is the antithesis of what my life was, has been like. So the book is very funny. It's lighthearted. It's sort of parochial. Englishman bumbles about, gets in trouble type thing. <laughs> but there's, but beyond that, there's a serious story about, you know, I, I was I got stuck in a minefield in Bosnia during the war. There's, I go shark diving off great with great white sharks in South Africa. I go to this place in the desert where they film Star Wars. All this crazy stuff, and it came from a place what you know I had nothing. You know I couldn't go anywhere off my own money because I didn't have any money. But I thought to myself, do you know what? Life will find a way if you put yourself out there to say I want to go around the world. Meet amazing people, do amazing things, and smoke cigars. And that was literally what I thought because it makes me happy. Yes. That's and I didn't think, how am I going to do that? I just thought, I am going to do that. Would your would your life be where it is now if you hadn't had that very Absolutely dark rock bottom not. moment Absolutely. all those years ago? Probably not. Not. Definitely no. not. Probably not. not Definitely not. Because he would have been retired. Yes. Not that way. Yeah, you would have been retired. I'd have been this yeah, yeah. pompous ass with loads of money who goes around thinking he's cracked life. And I can now I look back on the way I started to become. I, you know, I thought I was pretty fucking clever. You know. Yeah. Well, guess what? You're not. Uh huh. <laughs> That's humbling. Yeah. Yeah. And then it brings you back to what is good about you is that pretty much the things you dug when you were a kid. You like to climb rocks. You like to watch birds. You be in nature. That's pretty much what I wanted to still do now. All those things that I loved when I was a kid. Read a good book. Mm -hmm. Watch a good movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, when you're Laugh a kid, a lot. you don't go, what do you want to be when you grow up? Rich. No, you go, I want to be a firefighter. Yeah. I want to be a policeman. I want to be a race car driver. You yeah. want to have experiences. Cool. You want to have experiences. Yeah. You want to do cool stuff with your friends and you laugh a lot. Yes. When you're a kid, you laugh a lot. Right. And I'd forgotten how to laugh. We laughed a lot. And we then, laughed and a now lot. now I fucking laugh a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah. we, I think we all felt at e all the restaurants we were at. Well, they sure got a they sure got an experience. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Entertainment. <laughs> we really ripped up the bluefin bang. We sure did. But the doesn't grill. that make life oh. such fun when everything we you had do, so much fun. Everything you do is <laughs> those people are is funny. Like, Good. Oh, what are they on? Marge, and we were dressed Marge all just bundled down. up. We were all bundled up. <laughs> Howard. Howard? He's I having was a Howard. second Manhattan. Oh, my word. Howard. I was talking about taking my outer pants off because I'm like, I'm hot. I need to take these snow pants off. And the, these two are like, well, don't go in the bathroom because a nuclear bomb went off in there. And I'm like, oh, my God. Oh I can't even go to the bathroom. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, remember? Good Lord. There's, there was some and kind then of we were telling dirty jokes. protest, I think. Yes. We were telling <laughs> jokes. Not appropriate for others to hear. <laughs> nice tits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's all we're gonna say. It's gonna be in the book. You're gonna it's gonna to go be in the book. It. Oh man, it's absolutely. We have had amazing. such a blast, and I've been so grateful for you guys I, for welcoming yeah. that whole thing with open arms and running with it, not going. This English guy just wants a holiday, man. And you know, that's like, what I love about my life because now, like over, I, I we talked about saying yes to stuff. Someone, maybe a magazine will commission me and say, Nick, we want you to go and write about Stilton cheese or something. Or can you go to Normandy and write about Calvados, mm -hmm. how it's made? And so I go there and I meet the guys and I, and I live that life. And like for, uh, something's just popped into my head. I went to see the abbey where Dom Perignon, the actual abbey is, the, the, the monk's abbey. And next door there's a little church and Dom Perignon is buried there. There he is. You can see the see the, um, the inscription. You take a picture. He's there. Then I go into the abbey. Then we open a 1985 Dom Perignon champagne. Oh, my. And we get out a 1985 Dom Perignon cigar. And we sit in the grounds looking over. Um, where's the champ uh, Epinay? Yep. And we drink the champagne and smoke the cigar from the same year. And then you are there, right there. And it just blows you away. Unbelievable. You, that's living. Oh, my God. That's, that's an experience. <laughs> wow. Yeah. What a life. And it makes you feel so fortunate that you get to do these things in an amazing way. And then I can tell you about it. Hopefully, then you get to vicariously live a bit through it as well. Absolutely. Yeah. So the new book, Around the World in Ace Cigars, There and Back Again, is the title. And I'm going to crowdfund it. And one of the, the big rewards is you, if you want to pay 
a big wedge of cash, come to Nicaragua with me and I will take you around the factories and the fields and we'll blend your own personal cigar. Well, that's where I wanted to go as <laughs> well because on this trip, yeah. you talked about during COVID, you blended a gin yeah. to go with cigars, which is really, for me, unheard of. Yes, and that's it's why I did it, really. Hard. Again, talking about saying yes to stuff. So I was at home. I'm a travel writer, a lifestyle writer. I can't travel and I can't go and see people. And I can't, you know, hop back into the world of copywriting mm -hmm. or marketing because everybody's going, screw the budgets, let's just... Yeah, hold on the budget. We're not spending We're not money. spending a penny. So then I have no work and nothing to do. That's not a good combination. So I start to think, okay, well, at least let me do something to keep busy. So what can I do that's going to keep me out of mischief and to stop me sinking into that mire of woe is me? Yep. But also just help people at the same time we were going through a similar thing. So I thought, I'll do the podcast of the book. There's a podcast called Around the World in 80 Cigars, and it's me opening my contacts book and saying, oh, yeah, do you remember that guy in, um, you know, there's, the, there's that guy in the Armagnac region who makes amazing brandy. Let's talk to him. Or let's talk to the, um, the UN peacekeeper who is now in Kabul. He's in lockdown. He's locked in Kabul for two months because he can't move. Yeah. Let's speak to him. So I Zoom all these people, and we just have a cigar and talk. Wow. Awesome. So that was one thing I did. And then I started doing, like, online events where we would, I would host and we'd have like buy a ticket for 50 bucks and you get a stick and you get a couple of drams of whiskey and then we'll hook you up with a distillery live and then we'll throw to Esteli and hook you up with a manufacturer and get them to talk to each other and I'd say before we go I'd like you two to actually ask each other a question because it's a really interesting mix of yeah you know they, all, they would always find similarities between what they do and then sure. they would ask each other a question that was often the best bit of the whole show right so we do that. And then I thought, what else can I do? And I went past the distillery one day, and a gin, gin distillery, and I went in and looked around, and the, and the lady who was running the distillery said, do you like gin? And I said, I do. I love a gin and tonic when it's hot. But to be honest, I smoke a lot, a lot of cigars, and gin and cigars don't mix, in my opinion. And she said, really, why? And that's a really great question. And I said, oh, that's a good question. I think it's you know, a lot to do with the juniper. It's really bitter. And it's like the clanging bell on your palate. Okay, so why don't you try and come up with one? Is there such a thing? And I thought, you know what? Every, there's a cigar whiskey. There's a cigar, cigar bourbon. There, you know, there's cigars brandies and there's rums and everything. Nobody's ever done a cigar gin. Shit, that would be really cool. So I sat at home in my little office and she would send me little uh, sample bottles of various types of gin. And I would drink them and I would smoke something and I'd go, that doesn't work because, and that maybe does a little bit work because. And we, and we got to a stage where I said, look, this might be crazy, but why don't you throw in something? And she'd go, uh, okay, I don't think that's going to work. And most of the time she was right. Yeah. But occasionally she went, actually, that's really amazing. And my um, mother was born in Darjeeling and, um, and the partner of, one, of the company that I did the gin with called Leggett's. Um, she's an Indian lady, so there was an Indian theme going on. And I said, she, she makes her own, her mum makes her own garam masala, spice mix. And I said, would it be crazy if we threw a little soupçon of that in? No way. And Love it that word. It is unbelievable. So then it became the Oriental Cigar Gin. So it has this sort of slightly mystical Eastern spice going on. Juniper is well, dialed well back. It's, it's a stronger gin. It's like 45%. And it's, uh, there's some citrus sweetness in there, but with this really subtle mix of, of, of spices. And I wanted it to have a really rounded mouthfeel that mm. doesn't sort of take over, but is super smooth. And, Would go well with this. And when you have, oh my God, when you have it out of the freezer, cold, neat to start with, just neat gin. Yeah. You got to send us a bottle. Definitely. Tell me how I can get it to you, and I will do so. In the it. mail. Don't don't say what's inside. Just just send it. Pack just it up it. and send it. Throw a sweatshirt over it. Right. Call it yeah. Done. I, done. So what's the gin called, and who makes it? Mm. In case they want to go searching. So it started off with this grand title of um, Leggett's X Nick Hammond Oriental Cigar Gin, and we thought, you know what, <laughs> that's a bit of a mouthful. So it's just called uh, Oriental Cigar Gin. Oriental Cigar Gin. Yeah. If you search it up, you'll find made it. Made by makes Leggett's. It? Leggett's. L-E-G-G-E-T-S. Um, L-E-G-G-E-T-S. Yeah. Yep. Leggett's. Leggett's.com. Uh, and yeah, you can, you can track it down and I want to try and, 
you know, get some over here and I know you guys. It'd go great it. with oh. the book. Yeah. And a cigar. I'm a big fan While of I'm reading. Oh. And it's so. It, I don't, Rob will go I don't to drink. Club Caraway and yeah. we'll. But guess uh, and what? I'll enjoy it. I would, it. I would it. actually. You know what we'll do? A little bit. We'll yeah. get it and we'll we'll have it at Club Caraway with right. all of our friends who are mm. big into cocktails yeah, and cigars, and we'll we'll just have now a ball. Cigar goes best and we'll remember it. Nick and Nigel. Or any does it any cigar? Well, that's a, like, another on the back around the tiny in tiny lettering around the back of the label. I've done a that series of suggestive pairings. No way. Oh, have you really? Yeah. It's got the blurb on the back. This is a June by Nick Cameron, and he's this great. And then around the edge. And then around the edge, it goes, try it with this. I love it. Oh, yeah, we're going to get Now I'm going to read it. Going, do 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 We're going to get those cigars. <laughs> we are going to get those cigars. We'll go back into Sean's humidor yes. and say, we need one of these, one of these, one of these. Yep. Sean, you're invited. Yeah, you try must with us. try it with yes. your own cigars. They are stupendous. Yeah, you must try this. Oh, Odiba. no, you can't. We smoked them. Sorry. Oh, sorry. We smoked them. Love you, man. Appreciate you. Thanks for the job. <laughs> Love this hey, Ren. I don't know any other better way to end it because, to me, it's all going to be in the book. Yeah, definitely. Especially the trip to A&E during the winter camping. It's going to be a, a good story. Oh, yes. Wasn't what is that A&E? Accident and emergency. You would call it ER. ER. The ER. ER. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Sorry. Um, in England, it's A and E. Yeah, and it's going to be in the book, and it's more fun and more joy and more mm. gratitude for this amazing world that we couldn't live in. be more grateful to have spent the past few days with both Thank of you. you. And I feel you know, the same way. Last night, my wife was saying, "You know, now remember this weekend," and I was like, "Weekend? I, I just had like, a weekend." I feel like I just had a weekend, and this morning I said to Nick, "I go." I just feel like I was on a weekend, and now the weekend's coming up. It's a double weekend. Double weekend. And he goes, isn't yeah. that what you've always wanted your oh, whole yes. life? Is oh, every yes. day to be like a weekend? Yes. And I go, I just did it. I just did it. I just did it. If yep. you can do that, oh. if you spend your week thinking every day is a weekend, then I reckon you're a pretty happy soul. Oh, God, yeah. Just the simplest things in life. Just the best. Phenomenal. And I am pretty simple. <sighs> Another episode of Box Press right there. You know how to keep your cigars fresh with Boboda. Mm. Thanks for watching. Go get the book. Nick, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Nick. Thanks, guys. Real, real pleasure. Much love to you. Thank you. Much love to you as well.